How I develop my own black and white film at home. Shooting and developing your own film grants you a feeling of accomplishment like no other. You loaded the film into the camera. Every dial, turn, button, click, that was all you. No confusing electronics or pre-coded sensors telling you how your image is gonna look. Everything's done with your own hands. Getting your mind into the black and white mindset can sound like you're limiting yourself by not including color. But I believe it gives you an opportunity to refine a part of your practice which you might overlook if you default to shooting in color. Composition, contrast, the decisive moment and all the basics of how light works. This isn't just limited to film shooters. You can take your digital camera, set it to black and white JPEG for a day, week, month. Challenge yourself to see things differently. Many great photographers have had their whole careers just shooting black and white. Color film took a while to be invented, and even then it was a lot more complex to manufacture and print compared to black and white until the digital era. So many chose to stick to what they knew. Now, to develop your film, you gotta shoot some first. I think Ilford makes some of the best black and white films available. HP 5 Plus is my favourite and what we'll be shooting today. But you can also opt for a cheaper alternative while you're learning to develop your own film. Kentmere is a good option for this. Now, load up your camera and go take some photos. The photos I'm taking here are on a Leica M6 with a 28mm Voigtlanger lens. Check out my last video if you want to see my review of this camera along with the photo shoot. So, you've reached the end of your roll. Let me show you how to safely get it out of your camera. You're gonna feel a lot of resistance here on the film winder lever when you get to the end of your roll. Do not force the camera onto the next imaginary frame or you could easily break the film or even your camera. If you have forced it too far, it is still possible to save the roll of film, but save yourself with a headache and just be careful with your camera in the first place. Instead, once you reach the end of your roll, press or flick the rewind button on your camera you can read an online manual of how to find this on your camera. Unless, of course, you're using a point-and-shoot camera. In that case, when you reach the end, it just rewinds itself. But if you're using a more manual camera, flick the rewind switch, and then look for the film winder on the side of your camera. You'll see a little arrow on it showing you which direction you need to turn the winder. Now turn this round and round and round and round, and keep doing that. You'll feel a bit of resistance when you're doing it. That's okay. This just means it's winding back into the canister. It can feel like you're doing this forever, but eventually you'll feel it kind of loosen up, this means you're at the end. Just to be safe, wind it a few more times and then all your film should be back in the canister. Then open up your camera and you should see the canister there. Now I'm gonna talk you through the equipment you're gonna to need to develop your own black and white film. You're welcome to buy the equipment and chemicals online one by one, but Ilford and Patterson do make their own starter pack, which includes all the basic equipment you'll need along with enough chemistry to develop a couple of rolls of film. So let's get started with what chemicals and equipment you will need. First up, you will need film developer. I'm using Ulfasol 3, but there are many different ones available. The next chemical you'll need is your stop chemical. I'm using Ilfa Stop. And the third chemical you'll need is your fix chemical. I recommend Ilford's Rapid Fixer. A fourth chemical you need isn't essential, but I recommend it. This is a wetting agent. This is going to help prevent streaks on your film at the end when it's drying. So, those are all the chemicals you'll need. Now onto the equipment. You will need a thermometer because we're going to need to get the water to 20 degrees Celsius exactly. This is a mixer for mixing around the chemistry with our water. This is a spool. This is what we're going to load our film into. I'll show you how this all works in a little bit. Next, we're going to need some beakers to hold the chemistry. You're going to need three of these. These ones go up to 600 milliliters, which is more than enough to develop a couple of rolls of film at a time. Remember, you'll need three of these. This isn't essential, but I recommend it for getting the small measurements. This is a beaker that goes up to 150 milliliters. And this is your loading tank. This comes in a few different parts. It needs the lid. It then needs this funnel. As you can see, I've got some spools that I previously loaded in there. And these spools load onto this plastic part that comes in two parts. What's handy with these development tags is they can hold two spools at a time. So either two rolls of 35 millimeter film or one roll of medium format film. Always remember though, that if you're developing multiple rolls in the same tank, they have to be the exact same type of film. You'll need these two little clips. These are going to help us hang up the film and keep it nice and flat. You're also going to need this canister opener. That's how it works. Opens up your canisters. And all of this is going to go into a dark bag. 
It's important to remember that this dark bag does not come in this Ilford Patterson starter pack. You will need to buy this separately. I'd highly recommend getting one though, because the alternative is finding a pitch black room in your house. And even then you run the risk of leaking light. So just get a changing bag. Next up guys, we've got a bit of maths coming up, but don't worry, we're gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. And let's just get it out of the way now so that we don't have to worry about it when we're in a more time pressure situation. The most important thing we've got to find out is how many minutes we have to put our film in the developer chemical. To find this out, go online and search up the name of your film and then technical information sheet and you should find an online manual. For the film I'm using, HP5+, Plus, this is the technical information sheet provided by Ilford. When we scroll down to the development time sections, we find Ilfersol 3, that's the developer that I'm using, but check which developer you're using. We can then see on the right that the dilution is one to nine. This means one part developer, nine parts water. And 400 is the ISO of the film we're using. So we can see that we need to have the film in the developer for six and a half minutes. That number is key. So how do we get the dilution numbers right? Well, as we can see from the bottom of our development tank, it says that each film needs 290 milliliters for one 35 millimeter roll. So if the dilution ratio is one to nine, this means that we'll need 32 milliliters of developer and we can fill the rest up to 290. When we scroll down a little bit more, we get to the stop bath section. Here we can see that we're gonna to need to put the film in the stop bath for 10 seconds and the dilution is one to 19. So we're gonna need 15 milliliters of stop and fill the rest of it up to 290. And on the next page, we find the information for the fixed chemical. We'll need to have it in the fix for two to five minutes. I'd recommend five minutes at a dilution of one to four. So that means 72.5 milliliters of fix and we can fill the rest up to 290. Now it's very important that you check your own technical sheet before doing this. This maths is only correct for using Ilford HP5 film with the exact chemicals that I'm using always double check what you're going to be using. Same goes for the wetting agent. You can take a look online to see how many milliliters of wetting agent you need to water. Congratulations, that's all the maths done. Make a note of the dilutions you'll need and how long you'll need to have the film in the developer, the stop and the fix. Now I'm going to be showing you guys what we do to get the film out of the canister, onto the spool and into the loading tank. For the sake of the video, I'm going to be miming to you the things you'll be doing so you can see it on video. But of course, you'll be doing all of this in pitch black inside your changing bag. Inside your dart bag, you're going to put the loading tank, which has all those little accessories that came with it. You're then going to put the canister opener along with the canister and the spool. Once you've loaded that all into your changing bag, if you're wearing an electronic watch or any jewelry on your hands or wrists that are going to emit light, make sure to take it off. You don't want to accidentally press a button and then it sets off the light and then it ruins your film. Once you've got everything inside your dark bag, zip it up and put your arms through the sleeves. What you're first going to do is reach around for the canister opener and crack open your canister. Give it a few tries from different angles if it doesn't work the first time, but it should open up. Then all your film's going to unravel into a long roll. Here's an example piece of film. I'm going to show you what you'll be doing. Grab the front end of your film. It will have a little lip on it, kind of like an L shape and you can look for these two ridges on your spool. Make sure that they're parallel on each side. Then by feel, you're gonna feed the film through the little gap, push it forward a couple inches, and then once it's taken hold, you're gonna rotate the spool side to side just like this, and you'll feel the film going in round and round evenly. Keep doing this again and again and again until the whole roll has rolled up. Near the end, you'll feel the base of the roll of film. It'll have a little bit of plastic sticking onto it, preventing it from rolling into the spool further. You can rip that part off and then do the back and forth action with the spool again to get the last bit of film all rolled up. Now, by feel, find your loading tank, open it up and you're going to pull out these two little plastic bits. Make sure that this loose bit is slotted inside the larger bit and then you're going to push your spool onto it. You're then going to put that into your loading tank, find your funnel and slot this on top, turn it into place and then put your light seal lid on top finally. Give it a good push down to make sure it's all light tight. And that's it, you're done. We're now here in my bathroom where we're gonna be doing the actual developing with the chemicals. I'm probably gonna do voiceover for the rest of this and have you guys here on the action rig because the audio is probably gonna be pretty awful in this small room. 
and here I am on the voiceover. So first things first, we're getting out that thermometer and I'm balancing the water out to try and get it to exactly 20 degrees. You've really got to be precise here. And with my taps, this takes a while. So while it does that, I'm going to ask you guys to be smarter and safer than me. When you do this, please wear some protective gloves and an apron in case you splash developer on yourself as it can irritate your skin. In the video, I'm doing this bare hands. Don't do what I do, please. Now, I finally got the water to 20 degrees Celsius exactly. Now to measure out the chemistry. From the calculations we did earlier, I know exactly how much developer to put into my small measurement beaker. And how much water I will need. Same routine with the stop chemicals. And again with the fix. Now, to begin the actual developing. I'm opening up the lid very slightly, just enough so I can fit all the liquid in. I then start my stopwatch, and this is the routine you've got to do. At the start of each minute, agitate the development tank for 10 seconds. By agitating, we're mixing all the chemicals around, giving an even coating to the film. The rhythm I'm doing for this is turning the tank up and down while spinning it as well. In terms of the speed you should do this, you don't want to create too many air bubbles, so don't be as aggressive as you would be making a cocktail, but give it a bit more gusto than you were trying to rock a baby, for example. After the 10 seconds, we leave it to rest until the start of the next minute, and we'd repeat this routine on the minute, every minute, until we reach 6 minutes 30 seconds. As we approach the time, I get my stop chemical ready, And as soon as we hit 6 minutes 30, I drain out the developer. And then very quickly pour in the stop chemical. This only needs to be in for 10 seconds, so we straight away get to the agitating. Then drain out the stop chemical. And quickly pour in the fix. I then also start my stopwatch for 5 minutes. Same routine with the developer, agitate for the first 10 seconds of every minute, and then leave to rest. While I'm waiting for the next minute to start, I get the water going back to 20 degrees Celsius. Now the 5 minutes is up, pour out all the fix, and now the film is no longer reactive to light, so let's focus on washing away all the chemicals. Fill up and rinse out your development tank, over and over again. Now you can either leave your tank under running water for 20 minutes, or if you want to save water and time, you can fill up the tank with water, agitate it up and down 5 times, drain, fill up again, drain it out, fill up again, Agitate 10 times, drain out, fill up again, and agitate 20 times. This method is written in the Ilford technical data sheet that I showed before we got to developing. Okay, back to the iPhone camera. So all the developing is on, we're not quite yet, but for now, I just want to do the moment of truth. We've done all the washing, all the critical parts are done. Now to see if the film has worked successfully before we move on to the next stage. I haven't taken a look yet. I'm going to grab it for you guys. I've got the tank here, so we're just going to empty this out. Here's our roll of film. Even though I followed everything to the book, I still get a bit nervous every time, but also excited. Okay, so here we are. Now, the beginning of the roll is going to be blank because that's where we loaded it, so it was already flooded with light. Oh, there we go. Do you guys see that? Look at that. Those are our images. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to ruin the roll by dislodging it in a wrong way, but it works. It's been successful. That's the important part. Now we're going to go back to the back to the action cam for the next part. The film has developed successfully. Now our last step is to apply the wetting agent. Keep the film in the spool 
and put it back in the tank, and fill up the processing tank with the water. For this wetting agent, we only need a little bit, about 10 milliliters will do. Mix that in with the water, and push the spool up and down to get an even coating over the film. You'll see it get all bubbly. At this stage, you can open up the film from the spool, and run it through the solution again, and you can squeegee off all the water. You can use an actual squeegee, or if you're irresponsible like me, you can use your fingers. I'm then cutting off the top and tail of the film so we can attach the film holders. Then hang them up somewhere to dry away from dust. The drying process can take a couple of hours. After that, you can take it to a dark room to print or you can scan your film. I'm gonna put on screen some of my favorite photos from this roll of film. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's encouraged you to develop some black and white film yourself. You could invite a friend over, develop some film with them too. If you've enjoyed, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos. And I'll see you in the next one.